All right, so I got the printer plugged in in the back. Let's go ahead and power it up. And we can see the screen lights up, booting up, please wait. We got the GD Tech logo. All right, so we got a little light inside, which is great. Looks like it's coming here from the top down. It is pretty bright, but it's a little bit on the bluer side. But yeah, it looks like we have a startup menu. And if you guys notice, we have a vertical screen instead of horizontal what we're used to, which is quite unique. So hopefully you guys can see this, but to so the first part, we need to choose our language. We also do have a skip button, but I'm gonna go ahead and go through this. We'll click next. So here's gonna show us to remove the zip ties, which we already did and released the hot end. Then it's gonna tell us about the screws that we need to remove from the bed. There's four of them and there's indicators there. You can't miss it. So make sure you do that. So it's gonna do some calibrations. Here's telling us to confirm that there's nothing inside there and we can go ahead and continue. And there it goes. So I guess it wants us to also load the filament right now. So I'm gonna grab a roll of gray PLA. Hopefully you guys can see here, but we're going to set it on the spool holder and then I'm gonna roll out the filament from the bottom up. So here it's kind of behind the bracket and then it's gonna go into the coupler here with the tube. Now it does appear that it would be nice to have a short little PTFE tubing here so you don't have to go straight into the coupler as it also would prevent rubbing. Technically we could just take the coupler off, which actually kind of almost doesn't make sense why there is one there. I think this would be better off. So yeah, you can, you know, go through the coupler or go straight into the PTFE tubing like we did here by taking it off. So we're just gonna push it all the way down until it gets to the extruder or until we feel it hits like something. All right, so now that we have it in there, it does tell us to, you know, kind of push it as it tries to grab it. All right, so we do need to preheat here first. Like, there we go. And you can adjust it from here. So it looks like it starts at about 220 and you can go more or less. And so far, I like the layout of the software. It's quite clean. All right, so I think we're preheated and click next here. All right, so it says ensure the filament is going in. Okay, so I'm gonna be pushing it in there. I guess I passed that part. <laughs> All right, so yeah, I don't know if I wasn't feeding it in or it wasn't pulling it in, but I didn't feel anything pulling in. It says that we're completely lead here and that we're done so all right well here we have the main menu so let's look at it a little closer so we have some kind of icons here a wi-fi icon we got the preview we got the nozzle temperature the bed temperature and the chamber temperature which is at 28c right now so we got our light on and off we also can turn sound on and off we also have a stop button to stop everything so this does run on clipper and that terminates whatever's happening it's part of the clipper software kind of like a reset i guess so down here we can see we have main buttons we're on home and then we got settings so here we have the load button we have manual where we can control the axes individual so you toggle here on top between the two also here we have fan settings you can manually turn them on and off all the three different fans so here we have load replace filament and the amount and also extruder controls which is quite convenient and i'm going to use that in a second here to purge our filament and then we have the file folder which it looks like we have a few things in the local storage. So you have choices between local and USB and the USB does plug on the top and the back, which is convenient. So it does look like we can print a few things here, like that benchy there would probably be a good place to start and we can go through the folders by going back and forth. The last button down here, we have settings, which we absolutely need to do because this is calibration for out of bed leveling, input shaping and platform calibration. So yeah, and then we also have settings here for language, network, systems, after sales, automatic sleep. See what that's all about. Okay, so it goes to sleep, I guess the screen. And I'm gonna turn mine to never for now because I wanna keep it on as we're filming here. We also have updating here and the version we're on and restore factory settings. So we do need to set up the network. So connecting to Wi-Fi and you'll be able to utilize the Clipper software to connect and control, send files, and you know, obviously use the camera there to see what's on the build plate. And also, GD Tech does have their own app, which we probably will try out, where we can also access the printer. All right, so we successfully connected, which was very easy. It's saving the data and we are good to go. So yeah guys, that's pretty much it. What we need to do here, let's go back home. I thought this button would be to start printing a file, but before we do anything like that, we need to load our filament. So let's go ahead and just manually go 50 millimeters and I'm gonna click on down and it should start pulling through. All right, so I totally forgot that we need to preheat it first. Let's just do 220. We'll go ahead and preheat the bed to 60 so it gets toasty. The only thing I wish is there was control for the brightness. Maybe it is in the system, no? Yeah, I don't really see anything about brightness. It is a very nice screen and it's more bright towards the front, but looking at it from above, it has a really good viewing angle. I would say 45 degrees plus 
you can easily see the screen looking at it even from an angle but being straight up front it is a bit brighter and the camera picks it up way too easily which hopefully it's not too blown out but in any case we are preheated let's go ahead and go for it all right so yeah i did have to push it in just a little bit to for it to grab and it should be going through now and there it goes i can see it coming out so it looks like we did have some black in there and our gray purged and everything looks good so let's go to files actually guys i just realized that I'm getting ahead of myself like crazy because we really need to do the calibrations so everything should be automatic here but we definitely need to do bed leveling and input shaping so and we'll also see what this platform calibration thing is so it needs the bed at 60 which it is we'll click next and there it goes so it's going to do some out of bed leveling So it did go back to the clean out area there. And here it says it's heating up the nozzle to clean it. So it just purged in that little bucket back there and it's cleaning itself off on that spongy rubbery material in the back. It does seem to flex a lot. It seems to be working like it tended. So now we're waiting for the nozzle to cool down and now it's doing the measurements and I can tell that it's using the sensor, not the nozzle. Alright, so it says out of bed leveling complete. And yeah, it took quite a few points. I didn't really count how many, but so we'll click complete and we're done with the bed leveling so yeah i don't see any kind of offset or anything so uh, let's go ahead and do input shaping that's probably going to take a little while also and that's just going to move the axes in different directions to you get the resonant vibrations and try to cancel them out yeah it's quite important to do as it will influence your print quite dramatically All right, so it looks like it's done with that. And it does reboot the machine is what it sounds like. All right, so yeah, it looks like the last thing is platform calibration and maybe this is our offset for the bed is what I was looking for, let's see. All right, it is. So yeah, we can grab a little piece of paper. I got the sticky note. I'm gonna stick it underneath the nozzle. So then you can choose from 0 0.01, 0 0.05, and 0 0.1 and, and actually one millimeter also. So I'm just gonna do a 0 0.05 up. I think we're close. Well, I wonder if up is down here. Let's see. Yeah, up is actually down. So yeah, you're moving the bed itself up and down. So I went down two and that seems to be perfect because if I go a little more, it grabs too much. So you want it to just barely kind of grab, like just have slight friction. It was pretty close, but it was too close. So we made the gap a little bigger. So once we're happy with that, we're gonna click next and it's gonna save it. All right, so this is kind of weird because it took us to the next step. I thought we were done to adjust the knobs, but this bed doesn't have any knobs. There's actually pressure switches underneath, but no knobs that I see. So I'm guessing we just need to go through this thing as we can't really adjust anything, which is a little odd that it's here. Probably just needs a firmware update to get rid of that. So we're just gonna fly through this thing and click complete so yeah i mean it might be somewhat adjustable i'm not sure but it doesn't appear to be so we're just going to not worry about that so yeah at this point we're pretty much done so we can go ahead now go to files and let's print this benchy as our first print so here we have a little information how long is going to take so this is an 18 minute benchy which is very quick 10 grams of filament 3.3 meters and it is pla sliced and here it says bed leveling checked which we did bed leveling, but I guess we can let it do it again for the first time just in case it needs it. So yeah, we can go back or push play to start and we have a little preview here. So here it's reminding us not to close it as it will soften the filament if you're using PLA. So you can confirm or don't let it remind you again. So if you don't want to see this message, you click on here. All right, and we have started and this is the menu we get when we're printing. 
and it's pretty much everything we're used to. We've got the preview, pause, stop, the percentage, the name of the file. We've got our nozzle, bed temperatures, the fans, one, two. So we do have that external fan, the large one on the side that we can also control. Also it looks like the back fan too. So yeah, three fan controls and our light also here. So. Okay, so it's not gonna react as it's in the process of doing things. And here we have more things we can do, which is Z offset, if we need to go a little up or a little down, our speed and our flow rate. So I'm gonna go to the Z here because we might need to go up a little or down a little, and I'm gonna go to 0 0.05. And here we have a little offset measurement that we can see and also the position that it's in on the Z axis. All right, well, that was kind of unique. It actually only probed the area where it's going to be printing, which I haven't ever seen that before. That's actually quite clever. That's what it was doing. So because it doesn't need the whole bed probed as it is only printing a little benchy in the middle, it only probed it where it's going to be traveling, made sure that it's gonna be good there. So yeah, pretty smart and saves time. So it looks like we're preheating the nozzle. I am still on my baby steps here to be ready to go up or down. All right, for some odd reason, our light turned off. Maybe that was part of the slice. But there it goes and, okay, so it purged kind of and now it's printing and it looks like the offset is pretty much perfect. Let me see here, yeah, it is. All right, it's extremely dark in there so we need to go back and turn our light back on. Okay, I remembered I actually pushed this button quite a few times earlier. We started in the dark but the offset was perfect and away it goes and it's actually printing reasonably quick at this point. I mean, it is an 18 minute benchy. Let's actually see how long it's gonna take. It says we have only 13 minutes left. And I don't know if you guys can hear, the printer is getting a little louder as it's starting to really boogie along. But I do have to say it's actually not loud at all. And there's not much vibration either. It's quite solid. And if we close this lid, which we're not supposed to, obviously, because it's PLA, it definitely gets much quieter. And it'll probably get super quiet. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's a huge difference. And if I open the front, you can hear it a little more. So yeah, it's actually quite quiet, closed. Actually, I would say very quiet and not obnoxiously loud when it's all open. And the fans definitely sound more subdued than whiny. And that benchy is going real quick. All right, so it finished, but it did take a little longer than I thought, so it ends up being about 16, 15 minute benchy, which is still really quick. The bed's cooled off, let's see how easy, oh, it just comes off, okay. So, yeah. All right, so we got our first two prints and yeah. Well, let's check out our 15, 16 minute Benchy here. And right off the bat, it looks really good. So one thing to consider, this is optimized to print really fast as it is quite hollow and very lightweight. But just looking at the layers, they look great. Now this is a light gray color. So you're gonna see a lot more than normal. And the way my lighting is set up, you kind of see layer lines at certain angles, which they're not really there. This is more of how it looks naturally here. So. And you you guys can see by that reflection it's quite smooth but if I move it a certain way it kind of looks a little more rough and that's just the lighting but yeah I just wanted to mention that the bottom looks great looks like we have a perfect offset we got the crinkle finish from the bed very nice the offset is great no lip or anything the walls here they look really good no vibrations or not even ghosting maybe a slight slight ghosting very well controlled that looks pretty good too our box looks great 
Our overhangs are pretty good. Very clean walls. And yeah, it just looks awesome. And up here we can see there's a little bit of gappage on the top. It's possible that it could be under extruding or just sliced very thinly like that. So yeah, to be fast. And the chimney looks very round and excellent. So yeah, great. 16 minute benchy there. And we went ahead and printed this print. And you guys saw that it came right off, which is like a square and a circle. And this is a great print to kind of check the accuracy of the box and the circle to see how round it is. We can see the bottom looks excellent. It might need to go down just a fuzz, but yeah, it's pretty much perfect. I didn't remember which side is which, but they all pretty much look the same. Very clean overall. And the circle also looks great. So yeah, it feels very strong too. And this thing was included with the printer and it took 34 minutes, which was about 30 minutes. You can give about four minutes for it to start. And if we go back to files here, we can see that that's the last thing we printed. 